that's that's kind of where I think I probably got the the feel for it was it's like listen like I just want to do this thing so bad that I can't do it by myself and I think if we did it together it would be great I think it comes from the confidence of and I think so much is just based on not having the confidence in the thing you're doing or whatever yeah to say like to put yourself out there to say like I'm so confident I want you to come and do it with me too because I think it's going to be even better and not possible if you don't. Yeah. That is... I don't know. So it starts with a vision. I, has, I don't know. I mean, it's for me anyways. Mm -hmm. I, just, I get frustrated because, you know, you see things that you want to do that you're limited by what you can accomplish on your own mm -hmm. and you're going to need more people to do that. And so it's really out of a place of frustration for me. And I'm... I don't like enough people, so I get like, I get, you know, it's like, if I, I, I want to make sure it's the right person, right? Like, you know? Oh, yeah. I'm not saying I don't like enough people, but like, I get way more excited if it's like, mm. like a slam dunk, you know? It's like, dude, this is going to be amazing, and I'm going to, you know, it's like, right. that's what I can't, you know, it's like some people are just like, oh, yeah, whatever. You know, it's like, dude, really? Like, like would you invite that person over to your house, like, to like, one of your kids' birthdays? Like, how's that working out for you? You know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 110 percent, man. Like, I mean, I definitely feel like the people I work with. I mean, geez, you spend so much time with them. I, I mean, know, right? during the week, yeah. I spend more time during a a week. I'm pretty sure during the year, I spend way more time with my coworkers than I do even my family. Yeah. I mean, that's Eight hours how a much day time. minimum. That's yeah. 40 hours a week. Wow. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of time I, to I be just, miserable if you... I don't know. I mean, like, so for me, like, this goes way back to high school. Yeah. I always... <laughs> this is so dumb. I mean, it's funny. So, like, I just always want, like, if I... I failed at this miserably, but I was like, dude, if like I could have a job where like me and my friends got to hang out and do stuff that we love, like that would be like awesome. Like, how could we do that, right? So, started with a band. Like, I played with like my, I like my best friend. Like, we grew up next door to each other. Like, we tried to play music together and stuff. It never worked out, but whatever. Yeah. And then like, okay, one of my friends didn't like to play music, so it's like he's a he's a writer. So, it's <laughs> the next logical thing that we did. We wrote a sitcom. So like, we wrote like twelve episodes of a sitcom. Yeah. That never did anything. But. <laughs> But I mean, just like dumb, dumb stuff like that, right? Yeah. It's just like... Well, and then you end up playing off of each other. You know, it's like... So working with those people is always what's motivated me. It's like just... Yeah. I just want to be around like cool, interesting people that I don't want to punch in the face on an hourly basis, you know? It's about the basic requirement. That seems like a pretty legit foundation. But it's weird. I guess not everyone's kind of geared that way. Like, what do you mean? Well, they're willing to just, I don't know, tolerate so much more or less or whatever. I don't know what to tolerate more, I think, would be the right, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, I hate this person, but, like, I'm just going to keep doing it, you know? It's like, whatever. Well, there is a sense, sometimes I do feel like people sacrifice, you know, like, I think, I think there's sometimes a split between what can this person accomplish and what kind of person is this person, yeah. right? Like, somebody might be able to accomplish a lot because they have the intelligence, because they have the skill, because they have the work ethic, because they have whatever thing it is that makes them be able to do this amazing, you know, feat that nobody yeah. else can do in your office, right? And it's like, ah, but you don't really like spending time with them. You don't really like them as a person, right? Yeah. Like. And I that's think, a tough... I think it's a fine line because you can't just work with your friends like because they might not be good fit, you know? Yeah. Like they might just not be qualified, you know? They just might yeah. not be the best person for the job. But it's right. it's that kind of that blend. It's like, like where are you going to give up? Like, like, yeah, they might not be the ultimate best person, but they're going to have, like, team chemistry, right? You know, it's like yeah. they're the right person. They're the right fit for that system or whatever. Right, 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 right. yeah. Listen with your eyes closed. Lighten up your blindfold Even when it's day old We can make this show show You can ditch the halo All you do is say so I don't think insurance agents or owners or whatever they view 
they view it with like like kind of keep it at arm's length, right? Yeah. And they just they don't like embrace that collaboration, yeah. like right, like like the way that we like. I agree. So that that's kind of it's like listen, like it's, it's got to go to a whole other level. So I the thing that I hate hearing the most is I can't find a new employee. Yeah. Like right, like you, that's such BS. Like it's it's complete BS that you can't find good staff. It is, it, it's not BS if you are, if you're looking in the same places that everyone else looks. So like if you're trying to poach talent from s other agencies, well then you're not gonna get fresh ideas. You're gonna get legacy ideas where the person has worked with the same agency management system for 25 years, yeah. and then you plug them into a new agency management system and all of a sudden all their productivity goes down and they're unhappy and miserable and you're like, why did I hire this person? Mm -hmm. Or, see I think that's lazy hiring. I think the issue is we become very lazy. Like the business, the, the agency owner knows that if you hire the 25 year old who's smart, energetic, and could be a really valuable asset to the company, there's a year of effort in training that person to become a valuable member of the team. And I think that's the work that people go on to do. Well, I mean, so here's the, my point is like, you should know that person when they're 25 or 24. Yeah. And be getting them as close as possible to when that day comes. Like. Well, we've talked about this. Yeah. It's always be recruiting. Yeah. Like, always be recruiting. Yeah. You're always recruiting. It doesn't mean that you're always hiring. Yeah. It just means that you're always recruiting. Yeah. So, I mean, we have a person right now, we have two people right now that we're cultivating. Will they ever be staff? You just always have to be recruiting. You don't want to, like, get to the point where you need somebody and be like, oh my God, who am I going to hire? Yeah. Because that's when you get hosed. Well, I mean, I feel, again, I feel like people, they walk out of the office and, like, that's it, right? And it's just like, I'm yeah. done. Like, if they were to message a CSR at, like, 7.30, just about an idea, like, hey, what do you think about doing this? Yeah. Like, they would set something on fire. Yeah. No? I, yes, from day one, I have set the precedent with you guys that I do not care how much, when, or where you work from. All I care is the things that need to get done for our company to be successful get done. So I'll message you on Slack at 11 p.m. because I have an idea. I, there's no expectation that you get back to me. If you do, that's great. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't hold you to that. It's just the precedent I've set is sometimes I don't work from one to three in the afternoon. Yeah. I'm just gonna go hang out with my kids. But then I'm gonna make all that time up and more at night or in the morning. I mean, that's where, how really how the 5 a.m. club started yeah. for me. My participation is that I just need to get extra work done. Mm -hmm. So I think if you judge people nine to five hey, I'm only, your performance is based on your butt being in a seat, that is what you get. If you judge them on, I need you to make sure that when you leave for the day, all your tasks are cleared, yeah. like, then that's what they're gonna be set for. I mean, it's, it's culture. All right, let's get this out of the way. Do you think there's a certain level of lack of enthusiasm or excitement or maybe vigor? the way people go about their work. I feel like we I feel like I'm always excited when we're doing stuff. I just don't get that vibe from people. Or they're not looking for excitement. So my here, eat that. My um so I have two thoughts on this. I think there are three three types of people. I think there are people who don't and never will find joy in their job. So they find joy in other things, you know, they like to go hiking, they have a garden, they, you know, spend a part of the bowling league, whatever their thing is, right? Yeah. Um, and that's where they find joy. Show up at work, punch a clock, try to do a good job. After the day is over, that's when their life so really It feels so depressing to me, though. What? It feels very depressing to me. That feels depressing to me, too. But I don't think it's wrong, because to them, the job serves as the facilitator for them to be able to go do the things they want to do. Right? I think that's fine. I think there are people who want to find joy in their job but don't have the balls to go out and find a job that actually gives them joy. And then I think there are the people that find joy in their job. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe there's a fourth group that just will never find joy in their job because they hate working so much, but gotta pay the bills, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I also feel like I mean, I, I've worked in jobs where I didn't find a lot of joy. Like, I feel like this is definitely the the best job I've ever had, both in terms of, like, 
which the stuff that we're doing is really cool, but also internally I just feel amazing about the job, right? Yeah. But I, I don't think less of my other jobs. I mean, I still feel like they got me to a place where I am today. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm just trying to, so here's my goal. I'm trying to share like the way that we kind of work out for each other. And I, I want, I want people in the industry to aspire to a different level of working dynamics within their agency. So I, I, I don't know that I can speak for other people, but I can talk for myself. Yeah. Um, because I'm, for the exact, I mean, you guys know how I hired and recruited you guys. I mean, you had to work I half and I half with another there. company I for there. eight months. Um, you know, we had been talking for three years about something, you know what I mean? I don't know what it would be, but uh, I, to me, the people that work around me are as important as the company itself. I mean, yeah. I guess it's just different. I mean, I, here's the thing. I think what happens is, like we said before, you start a company because you're a technician. You love plumbing. You, you may not love insurance, but you know that it, by doing insurance, you can tolerate selling insurance or you like being the salesperson, and you know you can make a good living. You're a technician, you're good at it. You don't mind, you like talking to people, like helping people, you like doing the coverage parts of it, right? You like those aspects of the job, and those are fun things. You're a technician, and then all of a sudden, in order to be, to do better, be a better technician, you need a CSR. Then you need someone to do the books. Then you need a second CSR. Then you need, if you want to make a little more money, you need to bring in a producer. That producer causes you to need a third CSR. Now you need someone to answer the phones. Now all of a sudden you have 12, 15, 20 people in an office. And you're like, oh my God, all I want to do is sell insurance. And I have to do all these other things. And what happens is, in my, from my perspective is, you get married to the idea of, of being a technician. You refuse to relinquish some of that role. I had to give up what I love, which is writing and creating. I love those two things. And speaking, I don't speak nearly as much as I used to. I have to say no to people all the time. It's not that I don't want to come to their event. It's that I have to, for your sake, I have to do other things like manage, right? Like make sure that our budget is what it, you know, that we're profitable, making sure that you guys have the tools you need, making sure that you know, this, we sell this account, making sure that this, this client over here is getting taken care of, I mean, all that stuff. And that's managerial shit that isn't what I love to do. None of that gives me job bliss. But at the end of the day, the fact that you guys are happy, that the company is running forward, that we're making money, that we have a good culture. Whoa. Hello. Yeah. Ah, uh, right there, sorry. Is that how it's fine? Taco salad? Uh, taco salad's right there as well. Thank you. Dude, that's a lot of food. Good for you. Dude. It is impressive huh? how much you eat. I don't I think but you just see so fit. I think you just see me when I eat, like yeah. the only time I eat. Like, yeah, that's I, so it just it's, it happens really fast and furious, and then yeah, it's a whole lot of nothing. Lauren made note of your the pace of your consumption the other night. Oh really? She's like, wow, Joey eats fast. <laughs>